but our species wasn't always so widespread. The human species is thought to have originated in Africa, and 50 to 100,000 years ago, humans spread across the globe. Tools and other artefacts used by early humans around the world are found and analysed by archaeologists like the ones we're about to meet. I'm here with Adam, who's an archaeologist. Now, Adam, what do you do for your job? My job is to find out as much as we can about people that inhabited the world long before we did, ancient humans. Uh, what we do is we go to caves and rock shelters and other sites that these people inhabited um, and we dig backwards through time. We uh, excavate these sites to try to uh, uh, look at all the various layers of human occupation that have built up through time. Try to learn as much as we can about who these people were, when they first got there, uh, which ultimately is about telling the story of our very early human evolution as a species. And you went into the field recently. Where did you go and what did you find there? We went to an island in Indonesia called Sulawesi. This is a very large and ancient island. It's the 11th largest island in the world. And it has this, these mysterious animals that have only found on this one single island. And we have no idea how they got there and, and their, their evolution is a real mystery. And what we tried to find out is um, uh, try to solve the mystery of who were the earliest inhabitants of this island. We know that there were ancient people making cave art there 40,000 years ago. We have recently discovered cave paintings, depictions of, uh, of images of animals and hand stencils, which date back at least 40,000 years. We don't know who made them, but what we really want to find out is whether there are any people on the island before these cave artists arrived 40,000 years ago. We found ancient stone tools on the island that were made by a mysterious human species that is not yet identified. We want to discover who those people were by finding fossils of them, and then try to figure out if they ever had any contact with our own species is Homo sapiens 40,000 years ago. Wow, so what happens to those artefacts that you find then after you've been in the field? Well, most of them stay in Indonesia with our scientific colleagues in Indonesia, but we have brought back a small number of artefacts that require more detailed analysis here. For example, with my colleague, Michelle Langley, who works with us uh, at Griffith University. Okay, well, I might go meet her. Thanks for your time. No worries. <laughs> Michelle examines artefacts to find out what they're made of and how old they are. She also looks for markings on them that give clues to how they were made and used. Hi Michelle. Hi. So Adam tells me that you've been looking at some of his artefacts from Indonesia. What have you found? So he found a number of artefacts made from animal tooth and animal bone. And how would you use that tool? So you'd make up some paint with ochre, and then you'd draw some into your mouth and then you'd blow it through the pipe um, to stencil your hand or to fill in an image. Right, and you also recreate what they, the do. steps they go through? Well, it's one of the best ways to learn about prehistoric technology is to make and use them yourself. You learn a lot more about what works and what doesn't work. So uh, we often try to reproduce things that we find. Can we do that today? We absolutely can. Okay, great. <laughs> So Michelle, what are we going to make? So we're going to reproduce some shell beads that look very much like this, mm -hmm. um, and which we found in East Timor, where people started making them 42,000 years ago. Okay, and what do the beads look like? What are the So beads? when we found them, we just find them by themselves like this, and we could see that the top had been removed. All right. Um, so that they could pass the string through them and then make the string like this. So we needed to work out how they removed the top. So what sort of trial and error did you go through? Well, first I thought they might have been grinding them because it's an easy way to do it. But when I tried it, the tops went all flat and shiny like this, which does not look anything like that. So I could rule that out. Okay. Um, so the next thing I tried is just simply tapping the shell onto a rock repeatedly. And I found that that worked. All right, shall we give it a go? Sure. So if you take one, mm -hmm. I'll take one, yep. and if you just hold it firmly and repeatedly tap it on top, go a bit of force. For a little while you don't feel like anything's happening, and then all of a sudden they cave in 